this morning I will be talking about the subject as I spoke earlier last week discovering and pursuing God's purpose for your life discovering and pursuing God's purpose for your life discovering and pursuing God's purpose for your life very often you will hear questions like why am I alive you will hear questions about like am I fulfilled like why am I alive am I fulfilled am I wasting my life people often ask these questions at different phases or seasons of their life it's amazing because um, either you're black or white rich or poor you're gonna ask these questions am I wasting my life because everybody takes a stock of the life eventually for some people when they get to what people call mid-year crisis as they get between 35 and 40 you know they'll begin to ask deeper questions and evaluate what they do and why they're doing it so they're going to ask the question of why am I existing and the reason why they're asking this question is this they want to know if they are fulfilling the purpose for which they're existing that's the reason why they're asking the question so purpose answers the question of why of existence one thing we need to know is this that um, when people ask the question let me say it this way when people ask the question of why am I existing and they're asking themselves or other human beings they're asking the wrong person the reason is this you didn't make yourself so how can you know why you exist it's very simple hey I have an iPhone here and it's an iPhone 11 can I ask this iPhone let's even say Siri can talk I say Siri let's try Siri what is the purpose of iPhone 11 you say, I found this on the web the reason why is that he he does he has to look somewhere else when you keep looking at yourself and asking yourself the purpose of your life you're asking the wrong person if I want to know the purpose of iPhone 11 I'm going to ask who the manufacturer how come you look at your life and this this is the reason for all the confusion people want to ask themselves why do I exist they want to look for it why do I exist you are not designed to answer the question or even if you're designed to answer the question not by looking in words you can find the answer to that question by asking but it's going to be by you searching what the manufacturer says someone say hallelujah so today we're going to we're going to just delve right deep into this thing and soak it up in and someone says does god have a plan for me does god have a purpose for my life i thought that was kind of mass production I understand how you feel that way because someone says if God has a purpose for me out of all the countries to give birth to me give birth to me in this country I know how you feel when I was younger I bought the talk of swapping my parents but now that I'm older and I have kids I also think that my kids want to swap me sometimes praise the Lord let's start from Jeremiah chapter 1 in this. And, and this just will give you some perspective and we're going to get you Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 the Bible says this then the word of the Lord came unto me saying before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee God says <laughs> before you were even made and that's purpose because what is purpose purpose is original intent intent precedes creation purpose precede production so it's not when the manufacturer of this phone made this phone that um, what I want to make no he knew what he wanted to make way before he made it so God is saying the same thing for you he said before I made you I had something in mind for you now many of you have learned very wrong things about purpose which I will diffuse this morning because people say funny things when it comes to purpose 
So, see what the Bible says here. <clears throat> it says, Before I formed in the womb, I knew you, and thou camest forth out of the womb, and I sanctify you, and ordained you a prophet unto nations. Then said I, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. It's amazing because motivational speaker says you should follow your giftings and if jeremiah had followed his giftings he would have not ended up a prophet because sometimes your giftings are not meant to point you to purpose sometimes you can't rely on all your giftings to point you to purpose look at this story look at this story if if Jeremiah thought it was his gifting, instead of depending on your gifting to reveal your purpose, your purpose reveals what you're wired for. Your purpose reveals what you're gifted for. Because the truth is this, one of the things about gifting is this, it's your environment that activates your gift. True or false? If your parents are musical, the tendency that you're musically inclined will be very high. And I'm saying so to you because many of you define yourself by what you see. And God says, no, define yourself by what I've called you, what I've created you to be. So look at this. If, if I look at this phone right now, if I want to know what this phone can do, I'm going to get the manual. Because this is the big thing. Because this theory was popularized by misled motivational speaker. They most of them like, um, follow your passion, follow your passion, follow your passion. Let me tell you something, just for you to know, in case I'm talking about purpose, let me just bust your bubble once and for all. Purpose does not mean happiness. As a matter of fact, purpose can be very painful. So I say, really? Jesus' purpose was the cross. Was it a good experience? He said, when he said, he said Lord, let this cup pass over me. We're like, oh, this is, this is going to be a big thing. Because this thing that says, I must enjoy it, I must, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying enjoy, you must enjoy it. And that's why people are miserable. Because purpose does not guarantee happiness. What you need to do is to put your happiness in your purpose. What purpose guarantees is fulfillment. That at the end of your life, you look back and say, wow, I did what I was born to do. Wow. Someone say Hallelujah. That's what purpose is. So, Jeremiah says, hey, Lord, I can talk. It, it, it's amazing because, you know, this person has a purpose from God. Then he begins to tell God, I'm not wired for it. God says, hey, shut up. Before I made you. You are the one that doesn't know what you have inside. I know what I put inside you. So your gifting should not determine your purpose. They can be indicators. But your gifting don't determine your purpose. Your purpose determines what you're gifted for. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. So from this verse, we see that number one, God has purpose for everyone. God has purpose for everyone. Number two, purpose isn't created. Purpose is discovered. And then... Um, Mm. <laughs> this is getting serious now. How do you evaluate if you're succeeding in God's purpose for your life? Let's look at the story of a king in the Bible. Let's turn about the Second Chronicles, chapter thirty-one, verse twenty. Maybe, maybe I should read it from the Message version. If you have the Message version, can you? Give it to me. Or the Living Bible. Living Bible is better. Second Chronicles chapter 31 verse 20. Okay. All right. Tw uh, 31 verse 20. Not... Do you have the Living Bible? 
do you, what translation do you have the message living bible which, which is here what it's on the on the screen okay but nlt is not the living bible anyway but let's see we can use it the bible says in this way the king Ezekiah. so 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 let me tell you something many of you look think of the king of the old testament and you never hear about the king Ezekiah except for the prayer he prayed but the king Ezekiah was one of the exemplary kings in Israel in the sight of God. This was a king, one of the people that God has said, this is the best king of Israel. And I'm going to show you the reason why. The Bible says, and in this, the king Ezekiah handled the distribution throughout Judah, doing what was pleasing. Look at how he lived his life. He was doing what was pleasing and good in the sight of the Lord his God. Remember, he's not the one saying this about himself. This is a documentation of the Holy Spirit about another man. God looks at this man and says, wow, he's doing something good and pleasing in the sight. Let's keep going now. Let's keep going. And in all that he did in the service of the temple and in his effort to follow God's laws, yeah, and the commandments, and Ezekiah sought his God wholeheartedly. As a result, he was what? That's a purposeful life. See, a purposeful life is not when you say, I'm successful. It's when the one that made you looks at you and says, you're a success. Because God's definition for success is very different from our definition. Let me tell you, you may think we have a great iPhone, but if the manufacturer comes and tells you that, you know, it didn't come out that great, this is not what we intended. Because they have the original plan. So when you look at your life, how do you define if your, life is pop if your life is successful or not? So you have this huge house in Banana Island. You have this other mansion in, you know, in, in New York. You have all the service apartments in Highbrow area of London. And you have this fleet of cars. And have all this thousands of people working for you. And you sit back and say, I'm successful. And God says, hey, in your eyes you could be successful. But that's a success to me. So that's what purpose is. When you understand purpose, you mark your script right. What is purpose? Purpose is original intent. Purpose is the why of an existence. What is purpose? I want to read this to you. This is something I came up with. Purpose is the key concept of existence. Okay, okay. Do you have the slides though? Okay. Purpose is a key concept of existence at which if I fail, life becomes a colossal waste regardless of other achievements. That's what purpose is. Purpose is a key concept of existence. At which, if I fail, if I fail at this thing, what is purpose? Purpose is the key concept of existence. At which, if I fail, life is a colossal waste, despite all my achievement in other things. Let me give you a good example. It's like you write Wayek, SSC, Neko, there's all these exams you write. And you had A1, I don't know if they still call it that, A1 in, um, A1 in, um, in economics, in commerce, in um, geography, in Yoruba, in French, in chemistry, in biology, in physics. And guess what? In math and English, you got F9. You're going nowhere. That's what, the reason why is that there are other things that are important, but they are core subjects. Purpose is the core concept. It's like, no, it's because some said, as far as my kids turn out well, listen to me, that is not your purpose. That is important. Some said, as far as I get married, that is important. Some said, as far as I succeed in life, that is important. But purpose is a lot deeper than this. God looked at the Ezekiel and said to Ezekiel, said, wow, you lived a very successful life. You need to, see, when you're purposeful, your dream is this. When I see my creature manufacturer, when they bring out the original reason why they made me, it can fit exactly into what I lived for. Look at what happened. I want to read, Ezekiel was about to die, Isaiah chapter 30. I want to see this. Isaiah chapter, Isaiah chapter 38, rather, from verse 1. This guy was about to die. I want to read this. <sighs> you can give me the message of this one, you know, because I, I think that, that kind of flows easier for me. Isaiah, if you don't have it, just leave it on, on the screen. 
Isaiah 38, I want to see how God viewed this. Isaiah 38 verse 1, the message Bible. This, at this time, Ezekiel was about to die and God sent Isaiah the prophet to tell him that, hey, you know, God loves those people. He said, hey, you're going to die right now. Prepare your house so everybody gets a shock and all of those things. And see so what the Bible says. At the time that Ezekiel got sick, he was about to die, that the prophet, the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, visited him and said, God says prepare. Prepare your, prepare your affairs and your family. This is it. <laughs> I love the message Bible. <laughs> he said, this is it. You're going to die. You're not going to get well. Oh, wow. This is a huge prophecy. The Bible says, Ezekiel turned away from, Ezekiel turned away from Isaiah. And watch this. And facing the wall, prayed unto God. What did he say? Let's go. He said, God, please, I beg you. See what his prayer was. Remember how I've lived my life. I live faithfully in your presence. Lift out of a heart that was totally yours. You have seen how I've lived. And the good I've done. And Edekiah wept and prayed painful tears. Yes, let's go. The Bible says, and God, back, back, the story. You can go back to verse 3. Did you notice what Ezekiah said about his own life? Ezekiah said, Lord, I've lived my life according to your purpose. When he said that to God, God says, that's a reason for an extension of your life. My question to you is this. Do you have enough proofs if your life were meant to end today to say, Lord, I've lived in your purpose for so long. This is the reason for you to extend my life. Because when your life is extended without purpose, it's still a waste. And many of you, the past 30 years have been a waste. Many of you, the past 20 years have been a waste. You have a new opportunity to live for something huge. You have a new opportunity in this brand new year. Something big. Because, because li listen to Ezekiel's prayer. Ezekiel doesn't say, Lord, I love you. No. Ezekiel just said, Lord, I've lived the way you wanted me to live. I've carried out your missions, your assignment. I've done good with my life. And because of all those things that I know it's what you want me to do, and there are more things you want to do. Hey, Lord, I'm here. The challenge is that people are asking for God to extend their life and there's no purpose for life. And you know what the Bible says? People always say, the Bible says, I shall not, what? I shall not die. To do what? Did you see that? The scripture says, I shall not die but live for a purpose. The problem is that you are asking to live for no purpose. And I'm telling you, if something hits you like a disease right now, do you have enough things to say, God? I'm not asking you to give me a second chance, but look at how long I lived for the past five years. And see all what I've, how much I've lived according to your purpose. And, and the reason I'm saying so to you is this. Because this will come up in your life at one point or the other. You are going to pray this kind of prayer at home. I say, Lord, see how I've lived my life. And on the basis of this, I'm asking for this extension. See what I've done with this job. See what I've done with my wealth. See what I've done with my relationships. Say, say Lord, see, see, when, when you let me to know people, I'm quick to share the gospel with them. I'm quick to encourage them. I'm quick to show them love. So now I'm asking to introduce me to the president of the United States and the president of Donald Trump. I'm asking you for that. Lord, I'm only asking you for that because you know I'm going to do well with the relationship. Many people can't say that. Let's be honest. Many, many of us can say that. It's a kind of a huge challenge. You know, because if he was lying, God would say, shut up. So God agreed with him that he lived a great life. Did, did you hear what God said about Abraham? He said, I'm going to talk to Abraham because Abraham will command his children in the way of God. See, God watches the character of the person. That's what I'm going to. So some things, God said, I will talk to him because he's going to command his children. Like, God was so concerned. God noticed how Abraham led his family. And God is looking, and God is looking at your life. Are you leading your marriage the way God wants you to lead it? Are you using your time the way God wants you to use it? And if the 
this is your desire, then you must seek to understand what God's purpose for your life is, so that when you get to heaven, you now have all this A1 in chemistry, Yoruba, French, and biology, and your course subject, English and math, it's a total F9. And you wonder, how come that guy has more reward? He didn't even get A1, because he just got C5 in everything. Because some of you, you are getting A1 where it does not have eternal value. Oh my God. That's the truth. I'm telling you, if you look at the whole of last year, if you put, if you rank things right now, you are getting A1 where there's no eternal value. And where there's eternal value, your score is in the the negative. And God is saying that, hey, we need to fix that before it gets too late. And that's why if you have that kind of thinking, you must ask yourself about purpose. So, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Are, are you getting blessed already this morning? Are you getting blessed already this morning? What is, why is purpose important? Purpose interprets design. Ooh. Ooh. Did you get that? Purpose interprets design. There's a reason why this phone is like this. It's the design. See, some of you, the reason why you, you don't like your parents, you don't like your job, the reason why you've not come to... Appre- oh my, I, I have to come back again. I'm too excited. Let me calm down in Jesus' name. <laughs> Ready? Yes, sir. It doesn't sound ready. Ready? Yes, At the back, ready? Yes, All right. Why is purpose important? Because purpose interprets design. What is design? Design is the way I'm wired. Is the is the way I think. Is the way I behave. It's all those things put into me, and it's a fact of all the things that happened to me as I grew up. My value systems. The reason why a lot of people do not appreciate their past their experiences, even their pain. The reason is this, because they've not found purpose. Because when you find purpose, purpose turns your mess into a message. Listen, once you find purpose, purpose will help you understand why you're coming from where you're coming from. And why you're going to what you're going to. Moses was always asking, why was I an Israelite raised in the king's palace? But when he understood that a slave could not lead out other slaves. That God had to orchestrate a way to take him out of slavery and raise him in the palace so that he will have a different orientation than all of Israel. Then it, he understood, oh wow, so this is the reason, oh my God, this is the reason why I was raised differently because slaves don't lead slaves out. He takes someone that's seen the other side to take people that have not seen the other side to go to the other side. When you understand your purpose, you understand why you were raped. You understand why your parents had no money and you guys had to use salt to brush your teeth for two years of your life. Instead of blaming your parents, you embrace your purpose and say, my God, I can see the reason why. When people don't understand their purpose, they don't understand their history. Glory to God. I said glory to God. When the brothers of Joseph saw Joseph, they were angry. Against Joseph. So, so no, I'm sorry. When the brother of Joseph saw Joseph, they thought Joseph would be really angry against them because they sold him into slavery. What they did not know was that in the journey of Joseph, there was an interception in the process. Joseph had come to understand purpose. So when they saw him and they came to apologize, Joseph said, there is no reason to apologize because you thought you sold me to slavery. I know God sent me ahead of you to, be, to preserve you in this time of famine. Glory to God. You know why your past still hurts you? You've not found the purpose. You know why your presence hurts you? You've not found your purpose. When you find your purpose, everything begins to make a meaning. That's a purpose interprets design. Purpose interprets design. Purpose interprets design. Some of you are wondering, oh, why am I in this country? You've not found purpose yet. Because we're not born here by accident. Some of you are asking, how come I'm not married by this time? There's a purpose. You've not found purpose yet. See, because the, the thing about purpose is this. Every tiny bit is arranged together. Oh, glory to God. Purpose interprets design. 
In fact, when you discover purpose, the things that depress you will begin to have meaning. All of a, all of a sudden, your perspective will change. I, I thought I was living life. What I did not know that was that the, the creator had created the path I was walking in. And, and all through my life, God used people to teach me things. Some of them were extremely painful. Some people showed me fire in this world. I know a guy in my head that showed me what's the worst. But let me tell you something. And he showed me that at the age of 11, 12, 13, 14. That's when he showed me fire. And he was a Christian leader. I didn't, you know what God was trying to do to me? God says, you're going to be a pastor. You're going to see stuff in the church. Get ready for it. So whatever church people throw at me, I was wired for it from birth. I was like, it's in my, it's in my DNA. I'm telling you. When I was in, in secondary school, our teacher in charge of secondary fellowship, for some reason, he just didn't like me. He felt I was overzealous. He felt I was this. And he went against me so hard. But remember, I was the last born. So as the last born, I'm a CC. Like, you know, we don't know. You know, like our lives won't have. That guy, when he gave me fire, he brought toughness out of me. All through school. Let me even give you the story. So I was a coordinator. So we had the set. We had all coordinators for my set. Coordinator. But in, the, in your final year, you'll become the pastor. So everybody figured I was going to become the student pastor for the fellowship. And... Because I was an executive, we had kind of written all the names and we kind of knew, you know, in fact, when we were in the like sitting down, like, and that's me. Because all women just announced like, and the guy came back that night at about 12 midnight, two days, and said that he has canceled the whole process. He said, yeah, that's changing the rules. That for the first time in my school, the pastor can come from any class. And that everybody should get a piece of paper and they write the names. And they balloted, and we all couldn't see what they balloted. And he was like, praise the Lord, this is what the Lord said, and picked it and announced to us. And that was not me. And everybody that was in the school just came to say, what are you going to do? Because we all know something happened. And I said to them, I'm not here to serve man. I'm here to serve God. I don't have to be a pastor to serve God. Whatever capacity. I stay in. And this is me. Maybe I was 15 or 16. Going through all this kind of pain. I didn't know God was bringing me here. The guy watches me on television. Sometimes I saw him about 8, 10 years ago. He came and said, I have something to say to you because... I didn't even remind him of all the stories. I just really remember. Of course, we're not close, but I relate to him directly. He said, I just have something to say to you. First of all, I'm sorry. He said, till today, I can't figure why I was very hard on you. He said, but looking at where you are right now, maybe God was using me to prepare you for the future. And I said, great excuse. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What's your purpose in Christ? So let's, let's get, uh, there's a lot to say, but you know, whatever we can finish with it. 2 Timothy chapter, one, chapter 1, verse 9. 2 Timothy chapter So this is God's purpose for you. You know, people say things like, I'm, I'm called to be a banker. You're on cheap cocaine. <laughs> How can you be called to be a banker? Does banking have an eternal reward? See, let me tell you something. Maybe it's all these motivational speakers that have nothing to offer that tell you all this kind of things. Like, you know, everybody has a purpose and, uh uh, listen. Calm down. Let's follow. We're going to define what the Bible says about purpose. My, my, my purpose is this in a marketplace, this and this. You, you make it so confusing. Firstly, I want to ask you about this in my purpose. Question Was Paul a pastor or an apostle? Yes or no? Was he an apostle? Talk to me, please. Was Paul an apostle? Did he have a business of tent making? Which one was his purpose? But he was doing business. So why do you make you feel as if business is purpose also? Listen, God gives you gifts, talent, all those things. But that is not your purpose. What's your gift, talent, and education for? They help you to win in this life. What does that mean? The Bible says, he that 
does he that steal efficient let him steal no more but let him what walk with his hands when he says walk with his hands what mean that the value that means his talent his gift his experience his education that value let him contribute that value and when he contributes that value what will happen to him the Bible says it will have enough to eat and to help other people. That means all those things you do, it's, it's, it's meant to help you survive on earth. But it's not your purpose. You can leverage on your talent and gifting to do ministry, but that's not your purpose. But that talent is not your purpose. The reason I said so is this. Many of you really get confused. If Joseph was in your generation, a motivational speaker had told him, that his purpose was dreaming and interpreting dreams. Yes or no? But that was his purpose was in the future. That was on his path to get to where he was going to. Many of you are stuck with a talent that should be for a time being. Oh, you didn't get that. that that's true. Many of you are stuck with talent that should be time being. And many of you are so obsessed with what you like. Many of you are so obsessed with your talent you can't see. You are so obsessed with your talent, you forget your future. That's the truth. Because there's the craze going on about talent and talent and talent. And I'm not saying it's not wonderful, but talent is just talent. That's just the way it is. Some talents you have cannot be profitable in life at this moment. They can be later on. Because I must enjoy it. Oh, you think I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now? When you have purpose, you work hard at it. Pastor, what time did you see my message this morning? What time did I call you this morning? I, he saw my message at 1.30 and I was awake. I spoke to him at 2. I spoke to him at 3. Fully awake. It's, yeah, that's what my calling is. Like, one of the things, the of my calling is that Saturday is a strong day. I'm like up all night and just praying and reading my Bible and I say, oh, what I say again today? And all of you that have talent and really, really about your talent, let me just say, talent doesn't make you great. Discipline and development wins over talent any day, any night. That's why the most talented people are not the best all the time. Let me tell you something, eh? Sometimes the worst people in this world are so talented. I always pray to God, don't give me too many gifts. The reason why is that People that have too many gifts, watch their life. They are very confused. Yo, do this, do that, do this, do that. Do this. So many of you, that's the problem with you. All doors now to you are God's doors. Satan has entered an open door for you. You have also entered. Praise the Lord. So I'm just telling you, so, so your purpose cannot be like, I have a banking job, I'm a lawyer. Uh-uh-uh. Well, let, let's define what purpose is because, you know, people are like, oh, you know, all those purpose. And that, have you not seen all those rich people that die and they have a lot of money? So what's your purpose in life? To make a lot of money and help people. Your purpose has to be more than money. And let me say something to you. This is going to shock you. The way purpose is taught is as if it's a, it's, a, it's a private thing. Like, purpose is just for you. Listen to me. Most of God's purpose for every one of us is general. When God made human beings, he had one purpose in mind. That's of all of us. I thought quite specific. Everybody, I understand that people call it specific purpose. But what I really call it is assignment. Everybody has assignments. When they made all the iPhones, all the iPhones were all the same now. How come we're not thinking about human beings that all the efforts we need to say? But some high phones now have 256 gig memory. Some are draw SIM card. Some are rebuilt. Everybody has like this peculiar thing to him. But essentially our purpose as human is the same. Before you think, because I, I know what you're thinking and I, I've also taught what you're thinking before. But this is Bible thinking now. Because there's a way the world teaches purpose, which is not God's way of teaching purpose. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Let's look at it. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Are you there? I can read King James from this one. The Bible says this, Who has saved us 
and have called us. Now, now watch this now. I want to notice that everything he's doing here is in the past, in the, in the past tense. He says, who has saved us and had called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. Firstly, one, it's seen here that all the things about purpose was done in the past. Secondly, here, we see also that the purpose seems to be generic because the Bible says he called us, he saved us, he predestined us according to his purpose. There is what I call God's purpose for your life. It's not what you want, it's God's purpose. We can, we can on Tuesday talk about assignments, but let's talk about God's will. What, so I say, okay, so what is God's will for my life? I'm going to tell you right now. I, I'm going to tell you. I, I found a way to break it down. I, I'm going to tell you right now. Number one, God's will for your life. Uh, maybe I should not tell you that way. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Let, let's read it. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Mm. Someone say hallelujah. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Are you there? Can you go faster so that we can finish this up? The Bible says, 11, not verse 1. Revelation 4, 11. Let's read one to God. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure. That's your purpose right there. You were created for his pleasure. Hallelujah! Okay, and I'm going to break it down. Man was designed by God to know God and to be connected to him and to worship him. Maybe that's a better way. Man was designed by God. And, and that's why when you see a man that doesn't know Jesus Christ, says he has a purpose or he's found his purpose, you can't find your purpose outside Christ. Second Timothy 1 verse 9, the Bible says, In him we found. A man without Christ can be rich and purposeless. They can be smart and have goals and have dreams and have drive. But listen, purpose is only found in Jesus. See what the Bible says here. See, see, can, can you, can you, can, can you, you've got, this slide is ahead of my slide now, so you need to go back. You know, but give me the, give me the scripture. Give me the scripture. The Bible says I was designed to be like him. So man was created to to know God. Listen to me. If you don't know God here, you are not following purpose. Because watch this now. If all those rich people that write all those books are really purposeful, when they get to heaven, God will remind, will reward them for it, right? Does that happen? No. Your purpose is to know God and to worship Him. What does worship mean? So also worship is that. Oh, we sing, oh, sing, oh, sing. Oh, that's not worship. Listen, singing is a form of worship. Worship is not singing. What is worship? Worship is lifestyle. That's what, see, true Bible worship, it's not singing. That's why in John chapter 4, take note of this. The musicians always say it wrong. Take note of this. The Bible says that Jesus Christ said, hey, the woman said, um, we're worshiping in the mountains. You said Jerusalem. And Jesus Christ said, um, for the father give me the first line that starts it yes up to now it says let's get up to now you worship in the mountains or you worship in jerusalem it says for the father seek it what seek it what those that do what the bible says i know you will say worship but i said the father seek it true worshipers they were singing in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, the worship is the person. What does worship mean? This is what worship means. Making God the center of your life. That's what it means. Every day, your life is a sacrifice towards God. Every day, your life is a sacrifice towards God. Not only on the 31st of December. Every day, your life is a sacrifice towards God. The question I want to ask you to is, is this. Is your life a continual sacrifice before God? Romans 12 says that we should present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and accepted to God, which is our reasonable worship. You know what God is saying here? Let, let me put it some other way. Every man is designed with a God hunger capacity. 
every man even if he's an atheist there's something in him that looks for god that's why the people that did not know god went to trees and worship tree it was that desire to know god people worship rivers that desire to know god because every man is born with that desire i'm saying so because many of you have that desire here and that's why you're on cocaine that's why you're on loud that's why you're on molly that's why you're on marijuana and those things cannot fill up the hole listen everyone has a god-sized hole that only god can fill that's why you sleep with lucid sleep with shenan and laquita victoria chanel you sleep with all of them and you're still empty why are you see empty because you are looking for god in the wrong places that's why you make the first hundred million and you make the second hundred million and the third hundred million and with all the money you have and the, all the money you've stolen you're still stealing some more because you're still empty the reason why is this money was not meant to fill the whole of god god was meant to feel the whole himself I, I wish you were here on Tuesday as we began to worship there was such maybe you can check the story on my Instagram there was such an outbreak of God's power all the choir all of us just went on our knees and just crying and if you don't know God you think this is senseless they can't even see him but when your creator touches the hole on the inside and fixes something ha, yeah, 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 yeah. have you heard that when you steal a Mercedes Benz original Mercedes Benz car that from Germany they can stop the car in Nigeria have you heard that before because they created it even where God is and God reaches out you say why is the car not working why do we break down like that because the one that created us is having a moment. Is having a moment. It's having a moment. <laughs> it's having a moment. Someone says, Why do you cry and worship the one that made us? Is having a moment. Hallelujah. Someone says, Why do you break down that way? Because I was created to make him the center of my... let, let me tell you something. If you don't have it, you don't have it. Listen, if you don't if you don't have an app, you don't have an app, you can't fake it. If you don't know him, you don't know him. You can come to church. That's easy to fake. But do you know him? Our first purpose. We're created to know him and worship him. So we're designed to make God the center of our life. Listen to me. God wants to be the center of your life. Some of you, you know what you put in the center of your life? Your marriage. So my marriage crashes. I'm, I'm shattered. You don't know what shattered is. You are only shattered for 40 years. If you don't know Christ, you are shattered for the next one billion years. So if I lose my money or lose my I'm shattered. Because you, that's what your center is. That's what your core is money. Your core is business. God says, listen, I don't want anything to take the core in your heart than me. And that's why anything that competes with God is called what? Idolatry. Having something else. Because some of you are idol worshippers here. How do I know? You treat your kids way above God. Praise God. You, you treat your job, you, you worship your job way above God. The sacrifice you make for your job is huge, but not sacrifice for God. If they say come for a meeting all night, you're going. If they say come for wine, press, take three days off, I don't have time. If a child is sick, you take a day off in the hospital. We have a leaders conference. Oh, I can't get time off. And God is saying that. Are you worshipping the gift or the giver? What's the sense of your life? Some girls say, oh, wine, press. We're going to finish late at night, so I can't come. But when you go for weddings, I finish at 1 a.m. You are there. So I just feel sleepy, like you know, my, but when you're in the wedding, you're not finished sleeping. Look at him and say, Are you an idol worshiper? Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Stand to your feet, everyone. Everyone, look up to me. Look up to me, please. 
is my question to you tonight, this morning. If you were meant to ask God for more years in your life, do you have, do you have enough things to say, Lord, this is how I've lived purposefully. Please elongate my years. Let's pray. You pray. You pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Is Christ the center of your time? Is Christ the center of your finances? Is Christ the center of your family? At the center of it all, it's you. I see. Let's pray. Say with me, say Heavenly Father. Today, it's obvious. I don't have enough proof to show that my life is centered around you and that's why I'm asking you Jesus help me know you help me pursue your purpose in Jesus name all eyes closed all let's bow if you're not born again this is your time you've looked for it everywhere else you looked for God in every other thing you thought if you had more money if you thought you had a boyfriend if you got married you'll find him you've not found him yet because you're looking for him in the wrong places Anywhere you had today, will you raise up your right hands and say, Pastor, I'm not born again. How to give my heart to Christ. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you over there. I want to see your hands right above your head. You don't have to step out. You don't have to leave your seat. I just want your right hand as a sign of identification just above your head. Just above your head. Thank you. God bless you. Another person that's making that decision today. Thank you. God bless you also. Just right hand above your head. Will you say with me, say, Lord Jesus, just those that are raising up their hands, I thank you for today. I've heard the message that you died for me. You were raised from the death of my justification. Today, I receive into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. Come in and stay, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. God bless you. Can I have your sins? That was literally like half of my message. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can we go ahead and receive our tithing offering today? And let me say something before you give. Before you give, if God checks the way you spend your money, will it give him a reason to bless you some more? If God checks all your income in 2019 and saw the way you spent it, will it be the reason to say, oh, this guy needs some more? Or oh, this guy deserves some subtractions? Some people are subtraction, some people are divisions divided by two. Praise the Lord. By some people are additions and multiplication. Hallelujah. Discovering, so I mean, that's one part of discovering your purpose. I have more to say. I'll cover it on Tuesday. Hallelujah. Are we, are we ready for that? All right. So if today, have, um, sorry, let's pray on the Titan 